Come join Libby, Molly, and Tiffany, the ladies of Consignment Chats, where we talk about all things consignment. Welcome to Consignment Chats, Episode 6, where today we're going to discuss terms of consignment. Are you all ready to chat? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Super excited about this one. I think the terms of consignment are um, something that every single reseller should have in their tool bag. Um, And and as most resellers will tell you, at some point in time, somebody is going to come to you and they are going to say, will you sell this for me? And you want to have the tools to be able to easily do that and decide, yes, this is worth it. Yes, this fits in my terms or no, it doesn't. Because you definitely don't want to leave money on the table when that opportunity presents itself. So we're super excited to talk to you this week. Yeah, and I'm excited to learn. Learn stuff I can write yet. Because I'm yes. still a big consigner. <laughs> Libby is a wealth of knowledge where this is concerned. She's had a lot of experience. So I think we're all going to learn a lot. But before we jump into that and um, get our brains ready for all that, let's start with talking about our week. Tiffany, how was your week this week? Um, I had, with sales, it was kind of up and down. I had really good days and really bad days. <laughs> Um, but it was just a little tough. I'm still trying to work out my time schedule thing. I'm t- um, time management is definitely my problem here. And last week I didn't have my day job my, anymore. And this week I suddenly do again. So I had just sort of figured it out last week and now I had to refigure it all this week. And so it was just kind of a mess this week. Um, but next week I'm going to do better, do blocks. And like, like Molly does, I'm gonna try the block thing and we're gonna try to <laughs> try to conquer it. It really does work. And we'll talk about that on an episode because Libby and I both do blocks, but we do them differently the way we even do Very our blocks. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Libby, how about your week? Uh, my week was extremely busy. I have a lot of really neat consignments coming in. So it's been a lot of Yay. listing. Yeah. Some fun stuff. And yeah, I mean, the challenge has just been keeping up for me. That's about it. Um, my mom is, oh, I have one more thing. She likes to come down and, um, she likes to come help and, uh, she's a real workhorse. So, and we get yeah, to you're lucky. Time together. <laughs> Having your mom, you're lucky for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, you wanted to add something? I have one more thing. Yeah, I do. Because I decided I needed help. And um, my assistant will is having surgery on Monday. So I'm going to lose her for a couple months, probably. At least a month and a half. And um, I decided I really needed help. Just And picture taking is like the thing I hate the, I mo- I hate the most. <laughs> so I asked my son to come up here and give me 30 minutes a day. That's it. Just 30 minutes a day. And he did that for the last two days. Oh, wow. And um, I had to train him a little bit because he was getting a little artistic with his photos, you know, like <laughs> taking them like this and like that, like an angle. Oh, see, I, love that. I love things. I love it. Well, so I kept some of them, but some of them I was like, all right. And then he would take 30 pictures of one item. And I'm like, I, okay, just 12 <laughs> pictures. That's good. Kind of <laughs> but anyway, I, it really helped. I was amazed how much he can get through in 30 minutes a day. Wow. And it's really helping me a lot. Oh, that's, that's great. So, yeah. It's when you're in consignment, it becomes a family business for sure. I think we can all do an, another one on that with all the way yep. all of our families are involved. Mm-hmm. Um, my week was yep. a great week. My sales have definitely um, been on the upswing, which is great. I have been um, listing, 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 still have a lot more to list. And so that actually, listing every day, that listing every day definitely triggers the sales, it, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 it's great. And now, you know, like I said, my husband, he's, you know, all in now too. He works all day downstairs in his office for his, his banking job. And then at the end of the day, he's always, so what, what are we doing? What are we doing? And I'm like, whoa, back it up. <laughs> <laughs> but he um, he's all excited about it too. He's all about the algorithms and getting those listings in. It's great. He gets excited. So that gets me going too, but it's fun. And um, my scheduling was much better this week. I seem to find a good flow in my block scheduling. Finally, Um, I have a little more tweaking to do, which I plan to do this next week, but it just, I had some really productive days. So I don't really have any, any struggles except the little tweaks on my, my schedule. 
So I think with that being said, we need to jump right into terms of consignment. And I think that we should start with defining consignment. Okay. So the definition in the dictionary for consignment is agreement to pay a supplier of goods after the goods are sold. And then I found another dis, um, another definition that says consignment is an arrangement in which goods are left in the possession of an authorized third party to sell. Typically the consigner receives a percentage of the revenue from the sale in the form of commission. So what that means is when you take your item and you leave it with someone to sell for you and you get paid after the sale, that's consignment. That sums right. it up. <laughs> so the people that come in and consign are considered our consigners, right? Mm -hmm. And we would be considered the consignee, the business yes. that is doing the consigning. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the question I, I get a lot when people, when mostly customers or consigners call on the phone is, do you buy outright? Sometimes they're not quite sure how consignment works. Um, so I often have to walk them through, you know, we um, provide a service, we give you a percentage of the sale once that item sells that we don't do. Um, typically, we don't do buyouts, but some people do consider that consignment, but that's not specifically what we're talking about here today. Well, tell me about determining the percentage of consignment, Libby. Yeah, so um, that's probably one of the first things you wanna take a look at. And I, what I'm gonna recommend to just pretty much every reseller is just have a standard contract ready. Just have your terms ready, just have it there. Maybe, you know, you're gonna use it once a year, but just, you know, know what you're willing to do ahead of time. Um, so one of the things, one of the first things you're gonna do is look at the percentage and pretty much standard I see in consignment runs from they earn 40 to 80, 80 is unusual, but let's say 40 to 80% um, the consigner earns. So that means um, the consignee, the business, um, the consignment store would earn between what would that be 60 and 20% of the items. So um, you need to kind of think about what you put into it. You need to consider the fees you pay. You need to consider your time put in. Um, you might want to consider, and we'll talk about this in a little more detail, returns and how you're going to handle those if somebody buys something um, and returns it. Uh, whether you're going to absorb that, whether you're going to pass that along to the consigner. Um, well, that's that's a detail that we're going to get into because this is actually going to be a two-part episode. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to kind of gloss through the terms that you want to have out there. We're going to open it up for feedback, comments, questions, and then we're going to go ahead and record a second episode where we get more into the details of the contracts and how you might want to write something like that. Um, okay. Yeah. And there's what? two types of structure. I'm just gonna say there's flat structure and tiered structure. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, consignment stores choose to do a tiered structure um, rather than a flat percentage. So like at my consignment store, I'll share that I do a uh, flat structure. It's pretty much the consigner earns 40% across the board. Um, Tiffany, do you have a, a, a percentage that you're willing to, to share? How you? Uh, yeah, I, I usually do 50%, 50, 50, 50%. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. So there is that percentage. Some consignment stores do if you, they have um, high, like if you have an item over $500, they may offer uh, like a tiered, a tiered structure. If I'm consigning something over $500, maybe the consigner gets 10% more, but we'll go more into that. Uh, the second piece of this is a time limit on the consignment. So typically you have your percentage and you have your time limit. So in my store, I typically do a 60 day time limit. So items are consigned for 60 days and um, the consigner earns 40% of what they sell. And then do you have a time limit, Tiffany? No. No. Okay. No, because I, I don't give up on items. I just keep keep going. And like I, I sold a purse the other day that was, you know, I've been listening for two years. So okay. I just keep going. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the time limit that you have, when that time ends, 
on that contract then what happens with the inventory and all for Libby because you, yeah, you do so have that's, that's, that's like the third that's the third piece so we have our percentages our time consigned and then we have what happens upon product expiration and I do have some experience doing this in all different ways uh, when we mm -hmm. had the storefront we would allow consigners to pick up any unsold items at the end of 60 days um, right now, it's just transferred into our inventory. So that becomes our product, whether we donate, whether we um, sell it, that's, that's our property at the end of 60 days. Uh, sometimes we do courtesy mm -hmm. extensions and there's one-offs if there's a high-end item that is just going to take a little bit to sell. Um, but pretty much after the end of that 60 days, um, and consigners can choose to pick up the items, but what we found in the store, and Molly, you can really, most people don't pick up their items. I mean, I yeah, had a back don't. room filled with items that people just, once it's gone, they generally don't want it back. Right. Yeah. So that, it was right. just better if people, you know, they were much happier <laughs> once it was transferred to store inventory. And that also well, allows and to take lower, like $20 items. So that also, you know, is consideration there. Well, and I think I, that we're happy too, because they knew that anything that you didn't keep was going to do exactly what they were going to do with it anyway and get donated somewhere, which was their second yeah. choice if they weren't going to make right. money would be to donate it. And they felt secure in their relationship with your business that, you know, you were doing the work to sell it, had got it listed if it didn't mm -hmm. sell great, but anything you didn't continue would, would go to charity. So yeah. Yeah. Look, Tiffany, you were going to add something. Um, I forgot. Oh, I'm I know. Sorry. <laughs> the, um, no, I was just thinking uh, the, the 60 days thing. I, I didn't know that because I didn't talk to any, you know, consignment people before I started doing this, but I, that wouldn't work for me. I mean, I mean, I guess people can do what they want, but I, that wouldn't work for me because I have items that were given to me more than 60 days ago that I have not listed yet. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, that's a good you know, point. But how we because do it, the clock starts, like that 60 day clock only starts when we list the item. So it's 60 oh, okay. days from the point of, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's a really mm -hmm. good point. Because I was like, ooh, I have stuff that, you know, they gave me that is sitting out there in my shed. It's been there for quite a while. Right. I haven't right. gotten to it. Yeah. yeah. The clock starts so, when, okay. it, when it gets listed. I think when that's it goes really live. Yeah, when it goes live, okay. the clock starts ticking. Yeah. <laughs> I've just found so, so many things take a lot longer to sell. Um, that, so I don't know. I just like, I hardly ever sell anything within 60 days. And I think that's where it's but, nice to have the option for extensions in your contract that you mm -hmm. can agree on extensions for specific items, whether it's a, a vintage collectible piece that you just know historically takes a little longer, or it's a high-end piece that you just want to give time to really get it out there. Um, I like the, the idea of the flexibility of a deadline but then the option for some flexibility with extensions. Yeah, absolutely. I, think that's mm -hmm. good. I mean, in all this stuff we're and talking about is it's nice to have set up, but there are going to be exceptions. I mean, yes. keep your yes. contract. I mean, well, it's my philosophy. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody is keep it as simple as possible. And then you can always do a one-off. You can always like tweak the wording here or there, you know, if there's a situation you weren't um, prepared for, but to just keep it pretty simple. So you, um, you, you, you do a new contract with every, um, every drop off or every, you know, every consignment that you take in, even if that consigner has signed with you in the past. Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, no, I do not. I have, they have their oh. contract, they have their account and unless something changes in the terms of consignment, they do not need to sign a new one. Their account okay. with me is just forever until the terms change. So yeah. And then okay. I just keep that. Um, I scan that into our software, the, the um, contract. Cause I've heard some people that do that, but they have like a, a new contract with each, you know, consignment. I a lot of, yeah. I'll be and, interested to and they hear actually that. list out every item on in that was mm -hmm. delivered in that contract. And I was like, I, I mean, I don't even look in some of those bins for a while. So I can right, right. Like, list everything out. 
Yeah, this is definitely not a one size fits all. Yeah, for yeah, the contract, it definitely isn't. I mean, I know what works for my model, and it's going to be very different from what works for Tiffany's model. So, yeah. Uh -huh. So, what about payout? So that should also be addressed in the contract. Just a simple, you know, how they will be paid or when they will be paid. So uh, what we do is uh, within two weeks of the item expiration, we will uh, mail a paper check unless otherwise directed. Like we use PayPal and Venmo a lot too, um, but it's just in the contract saying you will. So there's nothing, I guess if the, a lot of our consigners just like to drop and go, right? They don't, they don't want to be bothered with it. So just make, you know, make it clear to them. Once you, there's nothing you need to do. You can log on to your account and see all your, you know, activity and items and everything like that, but there's no need to. We will automatically mail you a check uh, within, within two weeks of your expiration or whatever your payment schedule is, just lay it out in the contract. So you're not answering phone calls, mm -hmm. questions constantly. Um, cause right. that can be a real drain too. Yeah. <clears throat> For sure. For sure. And then the last thing the well, the second to last thing would be, um, communication with consigners. So like I just said, like I just said, um, how they would communicate with you if they had a change of address question, you're just going to put that all back on them. If their address changes, if they change their PayPal account, um, if they have a question, it is their responsibility to reach out to you. Um, so just, you know, lay, lay that out too, um, because you and know how that, you're willing to communicate via email, phone calls, text. I know in the, um, store, a lot of times it was hard to, um, to feel, feed the, the phone calls. Yeah. So emails were better because we would have customers in the store and you'd have people at the consignment drop-off desk and somebody would want to call and chit chat and go, well, can you see how much this item sold for? Or, um, that to tell them, you know, how you're willing to, you yeah. know, what, what ways, text, call, email, what's acceptable to you? Because mm -hmm. that'll be different for everybody. Yeah. So. Um, the la and the last thing you just want to address in your contract, and again, this is going to be different for everybody, is liability. Uh, generally, uh, consigned items are not able to be insured through the consignment stores insurance policy. Individ they are still the individual's item. So Molly, if you can sign something with me, you could have insurance on that item because it's your item. I cannot mm -hmm. hold insurance on that consigned item. So if there is a catastrophic event, a flood, a fire, um, something like that, it would be Molly that would be liable for that, not me as the consignment store owner because it is, it is not my item. Um, I, if anybody has any different information on that, that was pretty much across the board when I was drawing up this contract and we do have that, that clause in there. Um, thankfully, there's never been a catastrophic event, but. <laughs> but they can happen. They yeah, happen. it's better to be, be covered. For yeah, sure. so just, you know, uh -huh. let, let people know that. No, that's good to know. I, so I thought about that when I started moving the inventory out to the shed. Mm -hmm. it's like, uh, you know, yeah. if anything happens, what happens, you know. Yeah. yeah, so that's good to know. Definitely yeah. a, a, something to think about. Um, so this has been a lot of great, like you said, glossing over the main parts of the contract. And now the, the ideas we'll do, our next recording will be number two on this topic, where we will really dig deep and get into feedback that comes in from our community. Our, our group of people, which I think it's a great segue into the whole community chat. Because we, we love hearing back from everybody. It's and getting our feedback, building relationships. Um, it's been great. It really oh, has. I've met so many cool people this week. I can't even I know. tell you. It's I know. So it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's going on in our community? Well, we did a we did a welcome post, and we had everybody introduce themselves and give us the names of their stores. And I just looked at a lot of stores, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, I could spend all my money that I earn in these stores." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so it's pretty, really nice. To pretty see. amazing stores, yeah. I mean, speaking of that, I'm wearing a sweater from Conchie Consignment right now. So, thank you. So you know, 
so it was really nice to hear from all these, these people and see everything that they're doing. I saw one person that does a lot of live videos on their page. That was really fun. Um, so, you know, they seem to go live like every day from their store. And I thought that was neat. Wow. Uh, so join the party, join our, our group on Facebook and start chatting with us. Yeah. And remember when you post things on your own business page, use hashtag CC success, because we love to share your successes on our page and shout out your business and grow the community. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure that you're posting and hashtagging CC success, any kind of success, whether it's what you sold that week, or maybe it's your biggest shipping day ever, or um, a find that you have, a, somebody brought something in that you've never listed before, and you're excited to finally have your hands on one. That makes me think of Libby, the, the soft like butter Chanel we had that time oh. that I just, <laughs> that <was> beautiful. <laughs> So yeah, and the reviews. I mean, we love getting the reviews. I put some on our Insta story and Facebook story this week. It's so exciting to get feedback and hear from everybody. Um, we've gotten some more this week. Haven't we, Tiffany? Yeah, and I, I just wanted yeah. to go back and say, like, as, as Tiffany was saying earlier in the episode, um, one of the, re like, when she was starting consignment, there wasn't the information out there to even go and look this up. And I think that's a really good point of, like, why we're doing this and why we're building the community like this. So I just really, and I mean, same with me when I had started, I was writing the business plan and there wasn't too many models out there that I, you know, I could refer back to. So, okay. I'm yeah. sorry, Tiffany. Go ahead. Uh, sure. Okay. You with us, Tiffany, we need a review. We yeah. share something. We just get so excited. We have to say something. I know. Um, so we have a review on Apple podcast and it says it's from Polly 527. And it says, it's great to see a podcast about the consignment community. I'm excited for more. Oh, so that's just great. Well, there's a lot more coming. Yeah, <laughs> we, we have, have a lot, lot yeah. a lot in the plans. And I feel like every time we talk, there's even more that comes up that we can add to it. So, and feel free with through your questions to suggest other topics for, for discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'd love that. So if you guys enjoyed chatting with us and you want to know more and you want to stay connected with us, go to consignmentchats.com and that will connect you to everything that we are and have. And until next time, my friends, cheers. 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 Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Tiffany, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we talked about all things consignment. To learn more, and keep chatting, find Consignment Chats on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Facebook, and Instagram. <laughs>